Pfizer, the largest pharmaceutical company in the world, producer of common drugs like Viagra, Advil, and their COVID vaccine, has built their empire on a pile of bodies. They have repeatedly caused environmental damage, ignored product safety, advertised illegally, violated worker safety procedures, conducted unethical and murderous trials, performed rampant bribery, and showed repeated lack of care for human rights and human life in general. Truly, if one was to look for an industry where profits are valued over people, the medical industry is preeminent and of the companies. Pfizer is king. If I was to list everything Pfizer was accused of, it would take all day, so I'll focus on three different categories. Deliberate decisions that led to people's deaths, false and malicious advertising, and corruption and bribery. Now, for a company like Pfizer, it's hard to keep these areas separate, as lying about a drug can kill someone, but I will strive my best to keep things organized. Also, I hope you enjoy the first video in my Evil and Greed series. Pfizer definitely deserves to be the first with its recent positive media attention, but it will not be the last. Let's hop into the video. DEATH! The year is 1996, and Africa is experiencing the worst meningitis epidemic ever seen, and Pfizer, they sense an opportunity. They sense a chance to test a dangerous new antibiotic called Trovian on unsuspecting children in Nigeria. They set up a trial with little regard for parental consent or human decency. People say that success covers a multitude of sins, and that is partially true. If their drug had worked, people may never have found out what they did. However, for Pfizer's trial of 200 kids, 11 die, and dozens more are left with lifelong injuries. Five of the 100 children who took Trovion died, and it caused liver damage, while it caused lifelong disabilities in those who survived. But another group of 100 children were given the conventional gold standard meningitis antibiotic as a control group for comparison. Six of them also tragically died because, the family said, Pfizer had given them less than the recommended level of conventional antibiotic in order to make Trovian look more effective. This is both tragic, avoidable, and unbelievably evil. Sacrificing kids in order to make your unproven antibiotic look better is truly a wicked deed. Sadly, this is far from the last time they chose profits over human life. In 1986, Pfizer had to withdraw an artificial heart valve after defects led to it being implicated in over 300 deaths. Pfizer paid hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation because they had continued using the hearts for two years after knowing about the defects. In 2004, Pfizer admitted that a 1999 clinical trial found that elderly patients taking Celebrex had greatly elevated risk of heart problems and had covered up the issue, leading to hundreds of deaths. In 2012, Pfizer had to pay around $1 billion to settle lawsuits claiming its Parampo drug, a hormone replacement, caused breast cancer. The settlements came after six years of trials and hardships for the women affected. In 2013, Pfizer paid out $273 million to settle over 2,000 cases in the U.S. that accused its smoking drug treatment, Chantrix, of provoking suicidal and homicidal thoughts, self-harm, and severe psychological disorders. Pfizer was also accused of improperly excluding patients with a history of depression or other mental illnesses from trials of the drug. This is pretty wicked. In 2020, Pfizer reached an agreement with thousands of customers for its depot testosterone drug in 2018 after they sued for increasing the likelihood of numerous issues including heart attacks. If we know about these six instances of them covering up trials or continuing to offer drugs that they knew were faulty or dangerous, how many more issues go uncovered? How many more times have they sent people to their grave in order for another dollar, another line of profit? 
advertising and pricing. Ho ho! Uh, in terms of pricing, Pfizer charges an arm and a leg and does all they can to remove other options. They have repeatedly rejected licensing agreements that would lower the cost of their drugs. They deliberately charge exorbitant prices for drugs in the U.S. as there is nothing stopping them while charging much lower prices in other countries. In 2012, when a bipartisan bill proposed allowing for drug reimportation from Canada due to their lower drug prices, Pfizer made all of their Canadian distributors share the destination country of their orders with the implicit threat of cutting them off if they sell to the U.S. But Pfizer doesn't just let their efforts stop at exploitative pricing. Oh no, they also maliciously and falsely advertise too. In 1991, Pfizer was required to pay a total of $70,000 due to misleading advertising for its plaque mouth rinse. In 1996, the Food and Drug Administration ordered Pfizer to stop making unauthorized and misleading medical claims for its antidepressant Zoloft. In 2000, the FDA warned Pfizer and Pharmaca, co-marketers of the arthritis drug Celebrex, that the consumer ads that they were running for the medication were false and misleading. Two years later, the FDA ordered Pfizer to stop running a series of magazine ads that the agency said misleadingly suggested that its cholesterol-lowering drug Lipitor was safer than competing products. In 2003, Pfizer paid $6 million to settle with 19 states that had accused the company of using misleading ads to promote its Xerthromrax medication for children's ear infection. In 2004, Pfizer's subsidiary agreed to pay $430 million to resolve criminal and civil charges that it paid physicians to prescribe its epilepsy drug Neurotriton to patients with ailments for which the medication was not approved. Documents later came to light suggesting that Pfizer arranged for delays in the publication of scientific studies that undermined its claim for the other uses of Neurotriton. In 2010, a federal jury found that Pfizer committed racketeering fraud in its marketing of Neurotriton. The judge of the case subsequently ordered the company to pay $142 million in damages. In 2007, Pfizer's subsidiary agreed to pay $34.7 million in illegal marketing. In 2009, Pfizer agreed to pay $2.3 billion, the largest amount ever for a healthcare settlement, to resolve criminal and civil charges related to the improper marketing of Brexa and three other medications. They had been promoting the medicines as a miracle drugs that solved a myriad of issues, way beyond what the FDA approved. John Kapinski, a former Pfizer sales representative who complaint helped bring about the federal investigation, told the New York Times, The uh, whole com culture of Pfizer is driven by sales, and if you don't sell drugs illegally, you're just not seen as a team player. Which, based off of the number of illegal marketing complaints, seems true. <clears throat> In 2011, Pfizer agreed to pay $14.5 million to resolve federal charges that it illegally marketed its bladder drug Detrol. In 2011, the FDA told Pfizer that its online resources webpage on Lipitor contained misleading statements. In July 2012, Pfizer agreed to remove claims related to breast and colon health from its advertising for Centrum Multivitamins as part of an agreement to settle a lawsuit brought by the Center for Science in the Public Interest, charging that the claims were unsubstantiated. In November 2012, Pfizer disclosed that it had taken a charge against earnings of $491 million in connection with an agreement in principle with the U.S. Department of Justice to settle charges related to the improper marketing of the kidney transplant drug Rampamine by Wythe, one of their subsidiaries. That agreement was finalized in July 2013. Pfizer later reached a $35 million agreement of Rapumine charges brought by more than 40 state attorney generals. In the past 20 years, we have over 10 instances of proven deception and dozens more allegations or cases still in litigation. If a Pfizer drug is new, I would not trust their claims. If you want to be safe, look at what the drug is for, according to the FDA. 
Corruption and bribery. By its very nature, corruption and bribery are hard to identify, as a company will do everything they can to cover up the stain. One of the biggest stains for Pfizer was the illegal Trovian trials. They originally did the horrific trials in 1996 and, and had successfully covered them up until the year 2000, when the Washington Post published an expose uncovering it. Before litigation began, Pfizer hired investigators to dig up dirt on Nigeria's attorney general as a way to get leverage in the cases. This is according to their own leaked internal documents. Instead of fessing up and doing the right thing, they continued to cover up their evil deed. In 1976, Pfizer was one of many companies that disclosed that it had made questionable payments to foreign government officials. The company said that about $265,000 had been paid to officials in three countries, but did not identify them. In 2010, Pfizer disclosed that during a six-month period the previous year, it had paid $20 million to some 4,500 doctors and other medical professionals for consulting and speaking on the company's behalf. This was the first time the company had made public its spending of this kind. According to leaked internal documents, this was part of their plan to turn doctors into marketers for their products. It is unclear whether this strategy is still in use today, though it is quite likely it continues in some form. In August 2012, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission announced that it had received a $45 million settlement with Pfizer to resolve charges that its subsidiaries, especially Wyeth, had bribed overseas doctors and other healthcare professionals to increase foreign sales. And lastly, in February of 2021, after a year-long investigation relying on unnamed officials, Pfizer was accused by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism of employing high-level bullying against at least two Latin American countries during negotiations to acquire COVID-19 vaccines, including requesting that the countries put sovereign assets as collateral for payments. According to TBIJ, these negotiation tactics resulted in a months-long delay in Pfizer reaching a vaccine agreement with one country and a complete failure to reach agreements with two other countries, including Argentina and Brazil. This is pretty despicable as you are making desperate countries offer up assets they can scarce afford to lose. And now, the most blatant form of corruption. The previous FDA head is now on the Pfizer Board of Directors. Conclusion Greed is an underpinning assumption of our capitalist system we live in today. Some people, like Ayn Rand, take it a step further and go as far as to say greed is good. Pfizer is a natural result of what happens when a company truly embraces this philosophy. They put profits above people, above common decency, above what is right, and in doing so, have become evil. Any system must be underpinned by common shared values and morals, or else the system will never benefit the common man. Sadly, it is all too common nowadays for companies to sacrifice these values on the altar of profit. Through this series, I intend to highlight greed and evil in the hopes that someone someday can do something to curtail the worst offenders, because it needs doing. Corporations are not inherently evil and greedy. Pfizer itself was started in the 1850s by two German immigrants looking to do some good, developing anti-parasitic medicine. Sometime from then till now, they lost their way and become about growth at all costs. If I had to pin the date, I would say after World War II when they started doing misleading advertisements directly to doctors and hospitals, but who's to say for sure? My final pronouncement is Pfizer gets an 8 out of 10 for evil and a 6 out of 10 for greed. Anyway, Evil and Greed is a new channel I'm starting up with just the first episode posted to both, so if you like, go and subscribe to the other channel linked below. 
you could subscribe here too if you wanted. Anyway, it kind of bugged me about how many people were celebrating American pharmaceutical companies when they are among the worst offenders, though Moderna is pretty clean. So I decided to make this video. While the speed of development and reliability of the vaccines are accomplishments to be lauded, the companies are not largely praiseworthy. As this is also the first video of the series, feedback is highly appreciated and let me know what you think and whether this series is worth continuing. Also, for people who like my gaming content, never fear, I will still release monthly videos here. Anyway, this has been Evil and Greed. Please comment, subscribe, and smash that like button. See ya.